Does it hurt to walk? Is there no space for your arch when you stand? So what I mean is your foot flat against the floor or a pavement or whatever you're standing on. There's no space where the arch should be. Welcome to Battle Buddy Ben and in this episode we're going to go over what Pez Planus aka Flat Feet. So I'm just going to use, I can use either term, what it is, what Title 38 it says and how you can claim it. And you can claim this either because it was service connected or this your service aggravated say a prior condition that you had let's get started what is flat feet or pes planus pes planus relatively common foot deformity it's the foot deformity like i said your foot is like actually like right up against the pavement there's no arch like you would normally see in people's feet and i'm, tr I'm doing a bad example with my hands but you kind of get the deal i have some some images on the next slide that you can see but it's essentially it's a foot deformity it's the dysfunction of the arch complex usually you don't feel pain but some people may feel pain because it's hard makes it hard to walk this should be separated from plantar fasciitis which is more of just a fascia but flat feet is an actual foot deformity and sometimes because your feet are flat you you see if you look at the front and back of that person the foot like their their actual leg is moved over to the middle of their body instead of over the center of their foot the arch helps keep it over the center of your foot where it moves over the center of the body instead this could cause issues such as other like knee or other joint issues and back pain because your feet are deformed if you're finding this information useful and helpful, hit the like and subscribe buttons below this video to let other veterans and friends and family of veterans to find this video and get their questions and concerns about this topic answered. Also check out more content like this here on the Battle Buddy Ben YouTube channel. Then check out my website. It is BattleBuddyBen.com. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information about the VA disability claims process on there. Here's an image of flat feet. As I, sh you sh I showed you, your, f your foot is flat. You can see this is from Hill and Potton, their disability law attorney. They had a great image, so I just kind of, I'm using it because of it. It's such a good image. You can see how the normal foot, it's above the flat feet. You can see this one pr is pronating outward, whereas sometimes it can pronate inward. So flat foot causes that. You can see where the surface area touches there on the right. More of the surface of your foot is touching the ground versus some people with normal feet or people that have a, an arch you'll see that on the bottom part on the normal feet here is flat foot you know you can see like if they were to actually take a footprint this is what it would look like and here are some other things that could happen we won't go into any of these you might have some of these plantar fasciitis bunions hammer toes etc as part of you know having flat feet Title 38, so title 38 for flat feet is pretty short. It's It goes by unilateral or bilateral. So unilateral is one foot. Bilateral is both feet. We'll start here at the bottom. So you can actually get a 0% rating for this. It's actually here in title 38. Most A lot of the other disabilities you can actually get a 0% rating for. It says mild symptoms relieved by built up shoe or arch support moderate and then 10 percent moderate weight bearing line over the medial or great toe so again it's it, your your mo the weight bearing line so that's that red line that you saw in the image it starts shifting over toward the great toe versus the center in what bowing of the tendo achilles pain on manipulation and use of feet bilateral or unilateral so that doesn't matter you get 10 10 percent if it's severe, objective evidence of marked deformity, pronation, abduction, pain on manipulation, and use accentuated indicating of swelling on use, characteristic of cal pretty much calluses. If it's both unilateral or bilateral, so you know if it's only in one foot, you get 20%. If it's in both feet, you get 30%. And then if it's really pronounced marked pronation extreme tenderness to the plantar surface of the foot marked inward displacement with severe spasm of the ten tendo achilles so this is pretty much your, your it's hard to walk you can either get 
30% for one foot, 50% for, uh, for both feet together. And you can go in here and you could talk with your, your, your foot specialist, a podiatrist in this case. You could talk to them about this and you could talk about how you can, you know, maybe alleviate the pain. Because again, if you can alleviate it, it's not, you might be moderate or severe. And if nothing really works, you're in the, that upper pronounced area, 30 or 50%. Secondary conditions for pes planus. Again, that was listed on one of the prior, previous slides, but I'll list it here again. Plantar fasciitis is one. Arthritis, pain in the knees, hips, and lower back, etc. Because you're, you have, you're walking differently, the weight is being bared differently on your legs. So you can have pain in all of this. Not necessarily range of motion limitation, just pain. Other back issues, degenerative disc disease, and a low, like I said, lower back pain. There could be other issues such as you know you you have maybe a sciatica issue as well because you're you're displaced. So that is something that you can throw in as secondaries to pes planus or flat feet. Obviously, you need your current diagnosis for flat feet. You have to have that service connected. If it's secondary to something else, maybe plantar fasciitis, you you can then. You need that link. You need to be caused by that now service connected disability for a secondary one. So you need that service connection. You can use your MOS. You can use your job, whatever, whatever they, you call it in your branch of service. Use that. The official letter that's your medical nexus. Have it written in your service treatment records that you have this. If it was aggravated, you should have at least some sort of something at the beginning. And then it shows that it got aggravated at the end. Hopefully that's written in your service treatment records. Statements in support of claims. Tell the VA how this is affecting your ability to have gainful employment and a normal social life. If you have any comments or questions about this topic, please place them in the comments section or send me an email at contact at battlebuddyben.com. If you like what you viewed, hit that like and subscribe button to let others know about this video and the YouTube channel where you'll find videos just like this and much more about the VA disability claims process. Also check out my website. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information about the VA disability claims process on it. The website is battlebuddyben.com. It is also on the screen. Keep working hard and good luck with your claims.